Did you know that most plastic buckets are made with a thermoplastic called polyethylene? Wait till you see what we do with this stuff. All right, now, this is gonna be a plastic cover for the batteries. Let's, I'll show you what it's gonna be. We're gonna have a strap that holds it down onto the batteries nice and tight. This will keep the weather, the rain, the sun, and everything off of it. And at the same time, this is gonna hold the batteries in place. And it kind of dresses it up and makes it look a little better. Okay, so see, we, on our tank, we used part of the side so we don't have to weld this part on. But over here, I'm gonna cut a piece to match this and weld it right on here. Then after this is mounted on here, then we're gonna cut another piece to go down here to cover up our electrical and electronics. It should be really simple. Now let's see, let's uh, do some cutting and get to it. When I decided to build covers for my tractors, I did some research on the different types of thermoplastics. Thermoplastics become plastic or moldable on heating and harden on cooling, with the ability to do so many times. I learned that most of the common plastic items that I use every day are made from thermoplastic. I focused my attention on polyethylene because I found that it is easiest to weld and fairly inexpensive. The polyethylene sheets can be cut like plywood. Low density polyethylene is easy to weld and bend into different shapes. I came across some old RV water tanks that just happen to be made from polyethylene. Once I have my larger pieces cut out, I use the table saw to cut my side strips. Then I set the fence close to the blade to cut my welding rod pieces. In this situation, I decided to set my plastic pieces in place. I am using the tacking tip to hold the plastic in place for welding. Once the cover is tacked together, I can now weld it together on the bench slash ping pong table. One thing to note is you don't have to buy lots of expensive equipment to build a machine that will last for years. I originally built this to, for the lawnmower, to carry the batteries to run the lawnmower, and also to push the lawnmower, because with uh, wet cell batteries, it was too heavy for me to push. And once I built it, I realized that this is, would make an amazing electric power wheelbarrow. And it does. It will carry about 300 pounds. I can load it up as, with as much as it'll carry and dump it if I have to. But it would not do me any good until I built some sort of a platform to carry the things on. So let's take a quick look at it. Now I have my sideboards. I use just some scrap pieces of wood that I had around. And then I also put some pockets on it. Let's take a look. I put some pockets on the sides. Just didn't know what I was going to be putting in them, and I took some uh, pieces of PVC pipe and fit them in it. So now I can pull them in and out anytime I need to. Then, let's see, I got another one here. Take those out. Those are my sideboards. Then if I need, then I, I made a floor for it. Just a piece of plywood fit inside here. And now we're down to our carrier frame. Uh, I did use just some angle iron, some bed frames, some scraps because I didn't know how well this was gonna work. It worked a lot better than I thought it would. Let me show you how I attached it. The back just has a pin going through it. And all I do is I release the rear. The fronts have grooves in it to fit over the mounting bolts for the lawnmower. So I, I built this to fit around what I already had. Let's, take, let's pull this off and take a look. This is my carrier frame. I just wanted to show you how I put it together. Um, my main thing that I wanted, I wanted it big enough to carry a couple bales of straw. I wanted to be able to load dog food, chicken food, whatever my wife happens to need. Um, and I wanted to have it mounted securely to the uh, electric wheelbarrow, or we'll call that just the electric frame. It, it becomes whatever you put on it. Um, you'll note here, this is where it goes over the mountings for the lawnmower. It just sets over that. On this side back here, it goes around the wheel frame on the back, and it drops in, and this is the pin that I put through to hold it together. 
This works really well. Now over here on the, around it, I, I put um, steak pockets. I wasn't sure what I was gonna use, but I actually made it to fit around some half inch PVC pipe. And that worked really great. And then across here, I mounted a frame that uh, would allow me to weld these any width that I needed to weld them, my, these mounts. Notice here, this is actually just some bed frame. Um, I, I'm, if I, the next one I build, I'm gonna go ahead and use some inch and a half by inch and a half angle iron. Bed frame's really hard to work with. It works really hard to drill. It, uh, I have to keep sharpening my bits when I'm doing it. But other than that, bed frame works just fine. It welds up just fine. It appears to have a lot of carbon in it, which makes it very hard. Okay, this, the width of this is gonna be 26 inches wide. I did my 26 inches plus at the stake pockets, it's 28 and a quarter. So, so I can still go through a doorway if I need to. I can go through my gates. My length from the front to the rear is gonna be 35 and a quarter. 35 is close enough. And then you'll notice when I welded it, all I did was I just overlapped the front pieces over the side pieces. And then I welded them up all the way around. It gives me, it gives me a good, strong um, platform. All right, then let's get these measurements. From the front to the center of the cross piece, it is nine inches to the center. And then I think on the stake pockets, you can just put those wherever you want for the stake pockets. And if you just need a flat bed, you don't need the stake pockets. And then the length of these, the brackets that go down to the mower frame is seven inches. And then you're gonna do uh, whatever you need down for this. You're, what I would normally do is I would set it on there, I would level it up over the machine, and then I would build this piece to fit onto the wheel frame. So you could do this, level it, measure it, level it, whatever you have to do. Set this down on the wheel, wheel frame and then get that distance and set it. Then after this is welded on, I'll set this in, center it in the hole and just drill a hole right through it for my pin. Okay, I have my distances here. And then this, this is the last piece that I put on here. Let me slide it around to get a look. I put this on, I wasn't sure if it was gonna to wanna to bounce off of the pins, but it doesn't. But I put that on there in case I needed to put like a bungee or some sort of a tie down to hold it down. It's not really necessary. I mean, unless you're gonna go out boonie crashing with it while you're running, these will stay on there just fine. All right, I think that takes care of our distances. Oh, yes, I forgot one thing. Um, six and a half to here for this. That's for mine. You might want a taller one or a lower one. I'd keep it as low as you could because it gives it a lower center of gravity. And I think I gave you these, let's just be safe, seven inches with the groove. I got our, my length, my width, and that's it. And at the end of the day, if you're tired and you don't feel like moving and you want an easy way to get back home, I got it right here.